Hey guys, I'm going to do a video series on building a web application, a complete with an API in Rust. So this is part one. Today we'll be covering the very basics, uh, creating a starter repo and also uh, uh, how to handle configuration. So I'm going to be naming this as URL mapper RS. Okay. Let's look at all the files. So, it's, since this is a blanket uh, thing uh, that we've created, and there are no dependencies, nothing. The first thing, like I said, what we'll start doing is add a configuration uh, loading to our application. Um, we want to load configuration from the configuration files. You should be able to layer the configurations. You know, uh, another nice thing to have is uh, a hierarchical configuration model uh, the reason this is beneficial is because it allows you to break down the configuration into a meaningful and logical way like for instance you can have some common configurations and then you can have some um environment specific configurations which you can use to override the you know the, the default of the, the, the basic uh, configuration and things like that i think we'll go ahead and uh, use json as our uh, data format for the configuration files themselves so the first thing we have, we have to do is add the library uh, config to our repo so config is the library that uh, you know provides uh, so the repo is config hyphen rs but the create name is config so this provides us with this uh, hierarchical environment loading ability it's, it's pretty useful uh, so so we've added this um perhaps uh, what we really want to do is like i said um right like i said since we focus on or at least limit ourselves to json you know it, it um okay so let's get started uh, if you look at a source right now by default since we just created a dummy repo is there's just the hello world program um we keep this at least for the time being and then now what i want to do is create our config uh, module and uh, so as you can see here you know obviously we would need the stand std env because we might be uh, careful to that and then the main thing we will need is the config um, struct however uh, because of uh, i want to name my own mod uh, struct as config as well i'm going to alias this to r config just to avoid the name name clash okay and so uh first we create uh, uh, also we need the serializer deserializer uh, so we we'll use the library ready for that okay so we have survey and so survey gives us serialize we will be needing this uh, so the database just has a URL and the main config but we'll have a host we will need a host for our application we will have a port this will let this be an integer and of course we will have the database okay. and we would need to so we would need to do the data for this as well this uh, for the time being uh, this would be sufficient i think for us to capture our configuration so let's get start with um, just the initial uh, uh, let's implement the constructor since obviously loading the configuration could result could potentially result in an error you know, because your config is missing or things like that so we would need this to be wrapped in a result as we're building this uh, we would be 
doing a bit of uh, error handling and the best way to do that is with, by leveraging the library anyhow and we'll get into the details of this a little later but for the time being we'll just add this and we'll use anyhow such result instead of the regular uh, result that ships with uh, so this allows us to keep our uh, type definitions a bit simplistic and also anyhow basically also helps us in, you know handling these errors uh, slightly better let's get started so obviously we will start with a default configuration and then into that we will merge our default i think i'm happy with the Uh, a few things obviously we need the we need the file and then oh, we also need the from anyhow um, actually yeah. what we have to do is load the config without this the config model does not get compiled uh, we the air says I'm using the word about that later. It says oh, yeah. We have to use our identity here. Yeah, we get to return the result, which is fine. Um, but the main thing that I want to show merge basically uh, you know it returns a result of uh, a config and so for that purpose we use context to make sure you know, that error gets uh, converted to any error um, and also we provide a context um, message that indicates you know why it failed if it did fail it at this step and using the question mark uh, we basically imply that if there's an error we just return it otherwise we move forward let's do the next step now, now this uh, basically we loaded the default configuration then next what we do is go to the and config slash the env one so and for that we will need the env env let this be i use capital env as my thing i Default this to develop and so is this It says expected stuck this, however, config. So, and again, use context to. This is another thing we will mention that let this be let this be optional as in, so if you find the file great if you do not however we will uh, not bother loading this okay. I think it should be good now yes um, so we will load it uh, the third thing obviously I want to also do is load also from the environment and instead of doing this prefix then we load it from this and let's 
Should be good. Yeah, so basically what this means, okay, so we load the default JSON, then we'll load the environment specific configuration from config folder. And then finally we'll also load uh so from the environment uh, into our config and uh, so this way we can uh, on the fly when we are actually executing a binary we would be able to override certain configurations if needed uh, now so another thing that i want to do is you know uh, rather than uh, you know, instantiating a config this config is basically uh, it, what I need really is a single term. Right? I need this to be instantiated only once and then we probe the lifetime of the application. Uh, we should just have those values whatever were loaded during the beginning. I, I don't really need dynamically um, updated values or anything. So for that purpose, uh, the best way to do that uh, would be um, utilizing a model called the and what this allows me to do is basically be able to define a dynamic static reference for a config. Create a new and unwrap it. So, let's see. Yeah, it's just that. Um, essentially, as you can see, it basically allows me to create a, a static reference. However, uh, the, the native Rust static references are, uh, you know, they are resolved during compile time. But obviously, what we want here in the environment is we want this to be resolved at uh, runtime. So, this um, lazy static library allows me to do this um, so that I can define my config and have that you know, map to an expression. However, this expression will actually be resolved at runtime. Um, the first time we, we basically refer to the config, oh, sorry, the refer to the config. Right? That time it will resolve. Okay, so let's just say post uh, or This is what it look like. So as you can see, we define this. We have to we define it to look for the config directly. And so the way this works is it, this needs to be at the root of our project. So we we'll create a config directory. Here we will create first our defendation. And so we will go to the root. And integers, I'll just give a number. And then <clears throat> so, created a uh, default one, let me also get developing.
I just copied over this thing and what I want to override is if it's a let's say FDB. I also want to make one minus to one Now I want to ignore everything in the config except um I'm fine with the default. So let's look at the uh, well, yeah, let's look at this uh, in action. So, first time I'll just put yeah, so it compiles, it should compile fine. Um, let's just use con cargo run. Um, yeah, here all we do is basically print out our config. And right now, because the default is developing. It will basically you get the DevDB as you can see here. Um, right, and now what we can do is okay, say in v is equals to test and then try this. And just as you can see, it wrote a test DB. Now, although there wasn't really a test start uh, JSON file, but obviously there was the default one, and so it, it then felt it falls back to the default configuration in case that is missing however obviously we could also define a test um, db uh, maybe let's do that quickly just for demonstration is uh, and here i will only provide my database here. let's say hypothetically i want to do sqlite instead Okay. not a good idea but um, in any case uh, to, just to demonstrate how because it is actually loading it uh, it, it says you know yeah, we're using sqlite uh, uh, sqlite configuration for the database the rest of them are coming from default even though we haven't mentioned here and uh, so and the other thing is obviously like we can also optionally like because we loading environment also we can optionally override this from here as well so for example if i would say maybe this right and now you'll see it's loading the test one so this is coming from the c light directly and um, so yeah so we're if we have a layered configuration and it's hierarchical and uh, you know, we are able to override at different points in time this this from an ops perspective, DevOps perspective this is usually pretty good because you know you can um you can logically divide your configurations you can have some sh sh the common stuff and then you can have the environment specific stuff and also you know when we containerize this or whatever uh, we can optionally if needed you know, even override some of these configurations through the environment directly by injecting environment variables so that's good that's awesome uh it's really very useful so i think yeah, that concludes our part one uh thank you guys uh i'll catch you in the next episode